It's not quite night time yet. Uh, if we can make it to Dragon's Bridge, we'll sleep there. We might... Well, no, Carthwaston doesn't even have a, an inn. Isn't this the same epic music I was just walking to not too long ago? Coming out of Falkreath? Got starlight. Just gotta remember to level up here once the sun truly goes down. But there's tons of gold in that stream. It's washing out that mountain. And more forsworn. Sworn. More forsworn. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. But not worth it at this hour. Friend or foe? Which for me is pretty much lots of foes. Farmers. Whoa. Game. Give me a scare there, I think I'll save it. Stilico is itching so bad to climb that mountain and speak to the Greybeards. Just seems like like a mystery between killing that dragon and having that strange dream and being able to read the word walls. He doesn't know how he's able to do that. He's never seen that written language in his life. But somehow it all makes sense very easily to him. Okay, so what we said was we thought once we get across the bridge to Broken Tower, we'll cut off the main road. Courier. Important deliveries to make. No time for chatting. The fact that you're a Bosmer, sir, I'll spare you, fellow countrymen. Also, couriers don't usually have much fun. Uh, yeah, so all those factors together make Stilico feel very weird about this dragon thing, and he thinks it's related to the Greybeards because the Greybeards shouted at him when he killed the dragon. I'm not going past that thing if I can help it, because we've already had to kill a whole bunch of people there a bunch of different times. Oh, such colors. I don't know if anybody of, you, of your cohorts are nearby, but hand over your valuables. I'll teach you to talk to me that way. <laughs> Any others around that are pissed off that I killed her? Music is very happy. Uh, very, you know, excited. Okay, I think this is where we want to go. Hello? Why is there a lit Torshir up there? Uh, God, I don't even know what direction I'm looking. What is this? Liar's Retreat. No, we're not going to go in. Uh, that's a saber cat. Hood, look out! <laughs> Hi, Starko. Damn, dude. Ah, uh, that's great. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's this way we want to go. That adventurer was just by herself. Or if her compatriots around, they weren't within earshot. Maybe they had gone into that liar's retreat place. I think this is the way I want to go. It looks like off in the distance right there that it is solitude. So yes, this is the way I want to go. A 
this is a shortcut. You don't have to go pl past that honeypot location. I am totally fine with that. What are we dealing with? Oh, God! Spider. And I don't even know where it is. And I can't see shit. Ah, take an elixir. Oh, God! Ow! It's a steep incline. Showing depths. Where did it go? Shit, I heard it spitting. See me again, because I just got closer, and I don't want to have to climb down that hill again. Yes! We did it! Whew! So what the hell is this? Uh... You could not pay me enough money to go in there. Lit Torshir, weird, steamy cave. Spider out front. No thanks. A slaughterfish? Is somebody using this uh, as a fishing area? Camp. Ah! I think we know where we are now. It's the road to Solitude right on the other side there, and there's people walking it. <laughs> Adventurer's Journal. There's something unsettling about these caravan attacks. I expected bandits, but the remains we saw were literally torn apart, rent limb from limb. Yet, no mere animal could coordinate an attack on a full-sized merchant train, and wolves don't take prisoners. We found a trail leading up into the hills. We'll make camp here for the night, then set out at dawn. Whoever, whatever, murdered those people, we'll make sure it never happens again. We'll leave that there. I want nothing to do with this. With spiders and whatever the hell is controlling them. Hmm. Okay. Okay, gang. Come with me. We're going to try to find a way across the road. Uh, across the stream. Get to Dragon Bridge. Actually, I think I'll level up right now. Let's get this to 200 health, huh? Okay, so, as we said before, what was the plan? There's this. Ah, uh, yeah, marksmanship. That's right. Point blank shot. Um. There's, uh, I forget what this one is called. Finesse, right? For power attacks. There's the two sneak perks. But then there's this one. Locate secret spaces and containers when you search them and can thereby find more loot. That's the one that I want. Treasure Hunter. Very nice. I'm saving again. Right after I saved, I'm saving it again. Mental note to buy more Elixir of Vitality the next time I'm in town, since I used one. Okay. 
I think I know where I am, but this road sign will tell me for sure. In fact, that looks like Dragon Ridge right up there. Indeed, it probably is. Hmm. Game's being kind of weird. We're very close to the guard. I, in fact, I know the guard sometimes comes across the bridge, so let's not even tempt fate. Instead, we're going to stay at the inn tonight with that one annoying uh, bard who doesn't ever talk without the flute in his mouth. Endurance perk progress increased. Something to remember next time we light a fire. Hello, authorities. What, what the hell? Where's my group? Hello, authorities. No need to concern yourself with us. Four shields. This is where we'll be for tonight. Come on in. We got warm food, Level. warm drinks, and warm beds. I didn't expect to be behind your counter. Sorry, madam. Level 22. Nope. Fate is the name. Zenithar. I keep the inn. Thanks. Tell me, traveler. Do you have any regrets? Sorry. Of course you Hit do. the mic. We all do. Regrets? Yeah, a few. They say regrets are the foundation of wisdom. For if we do not regret our mistakes, we are damned to repeat them. Our successes, meanwhile, need not to be remembered, for they only serve to bolster our temerity. That is why a general is haunted not by his victories in the battlefield, but those that slip from his grasp. Well, you're obviously a soldier. Are you a, a general of some kind? Um, yeah, Stilico has has regrets uh, that he wasn't uh, more careful when he was in in uh, Cyrodiil, that he wasn't able to save Wylire when he was in Valenwood. He has vowed not to repeat them, though. That's why he's looking for all the, uh, the power that he can find. That is the way we are meant to live. Always stumbling forward, looking back only to see how far we've come. For some things, such a task is simple. Yeah, that traveler made it across the bridge into the inn. A tactless reply. A spilled drink. For others, the tendrils run deeper. Rooting your body in the earth. There is no way forward. Not until you free yourself of the memory. Not until you make things right. I feel tired. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. Um, what exactly is the problem? The thief. The one that got away. Mm. An imperial woman based on the reports. The lone operative. She's burglarized homes of a number of notable lords, thanes, and nobles. Really? At times, she's even ransomed their children. Really? Who is this lady? She's outfoxed the city guards. Evaded the Oculatus. Don't know what that is. managed to rankle prominent members of the Thieves' Guild. Wow. I want to recruit this woman. If so, why hasn't more of an effort been made to catch her? She sounds like, uh, quite the, 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 uh, <laughs> the thief. I was trying to think of a different word there, but I couldn't. She sounds like quite the thief. Unfortunately, the resources of the Empire exhausted in tracking her down force the Council to suspend all pursuit. Given the state of the Imperial coffers, it was cheaper to let her run free and compensate the grief for their losses. Damn. Only I remain That's the sweet spot right the there. Of justice. And what I lack in many resources, I make up for in will. I see. I've chased her across Tamriel for the last 15 years. And I believe I'm close to never catching her. I, yeah, I'd like to meet this. I, I guess I could lie and say this, but I'd like to meet the thief. I don't think I want to tell him that we'd get along, because I don't want him to think that I would be on her side. But she sounds like quite the character. I'm not sure what I find more incredulous. That you were a thief? Oh, well, yeah. That you'd advertise this fact in the office of the Penitus Saculatus. Either way, you're not my problem any longer. I'm retired. It's the only way I can pursue this case without being reprimanded by my superiors. Hmm. Uh, any description? I do. It's been burned into the bone of my skull from sketches okay. and wanted posters and images from another time. 
A raven-haired woman, 32 years of age, with an aquiline nose and eyes, the color of steel. Hmm. She is as fearsome as an orc, but can be as cunning as a diplomat, and if need be, can charm me with the grace of a sylph. Uh, imperial woman, dark-haired, 32 years of age, gray eyes. You seem fa almost fond of her. What are you implying? One cannot evade the Pinitus Oculatus and not earn a measure of respect. And one cannot defy them without earning their wrath. I am a soldier, sworn in the service of the Pinitus Oculatus. Sworn to uphold the law. I think he just likes saying that. If someone breaks the law, it matters not whether they are the Raven of Anvil or the Emperor's own kin. They are all criminal scum. Raven of Anvil? Is that... Is that's the... That's the... Uh... The thief, then? The Raven of Anvil? Yes. I thought it was best to give her a name that was more memorable and identifiable. All reports are at times conflicting, but the most reliable agree on one point. The girl has hair as black as a raven, so dark that it seems to devour the light around it. And like the ominous bird, she is not to be trusted, and the very sight of her is a wicked portent for those who have worked hard for their wealth. None more so than the Countess of Anvil, hmm. when her weakness opened the doors of the Great Hall to this Eater of Carrion. Uh, so this heist, how did it happen? The Countess's cousin had passed away, and she was now on her twelfth day of mourning. She refused to eat, and refused to sleep. Soon her court was deprived of the same. As her mood grew more and more contemptuous, it seemed nothing would allay her grief. Many bards and poets came from all over Tamriel to celebrate the life of her cousin in hopes of appeasing the Countess. Yet it seemed that even time itself had given up all hope until the day a raven-haired minstrel walked into the castle and gently strummed her lute. That would be the Raven of Anvil. Those who were in attendance insisted that it was the saddest song ever heard by mortal ears. They claimed the sky rained for seven days and seven nights as both the Countess and the Divines exhausted all the tears. That night, the entire court slept for the first time in weeks, and when they awoke, they found their cases and coffers emptied of the valuables. Hmm. Listen for the bard who plays Dusk on Anvil Harbor. Um. You told that story with some emotion. It is a sad story, a tale of two deaths in one birth. The girl had talent to give the world a gift of joy, but she chooses to lead a life that brings nothing but sorrow. Hmm. Seems that you know this woman. Yes. My words have betrayed me. Excuse me? In this conversation. It is not That's not her right there, is it? <laughs> Few, however, are perceptive enough to find meaning in the symbol of words. It is as you Make say. Make up your goddamn mind. I know the Raven of Anvil. You do. I know both her and the song she played on that fateful night in Anvil. After all, I sighed both of them. The Raven of Anvil is my daughter. I see. You want your daughter back then, hmm? I don't need her back. She's her own woman now, with her own life. One that's separate from the one I would choose. It's not about getting justice anymore. Perhaps it never was. I don't need her to repent, and I don't need her to change. I'm at the age with the coffers of a few noble. Seriously, that's not her, right? Sleep. Dark hair, steel eyes. What I dread Whoa, she's got. Of time and one final she regret. like me talking about her. I don't care what it takes or how long I have to look. All I want is to see her smile again. Really? I. I'm sorry. If you please. I need a moment to myself, but, but I thank you for listening. Interesting. Uh, I want to meet his daughter and recruit her for the Razors. Can I help you? Oh. What are you looking at? Is it Fader that I saw? No. Who was it that I saw? Where did she go?
It's cramped quarters back there. You. What do you need? Just an adventurer, huh? Respect the law, and you'll have no trouble in Dragonbridge. Let's go say hi to Skarn, I guess. Gilsey, right? Make it quick. <laughs> I always catch him in the middle of an instrument. Uh, nothing else to talk about, huh? Farewell. I wanted to see if maybe he knew orc of the, the song dead. that the Penitus Oculatus guy had mentioned. So the adventurers came here for the night to hang what out. Do you want? Uh, all right. I guess I just want a room, a drink, some food, and uh, sleep. Fate is the name. I keep the inn. Need a place to stay, please. Me and my friends uh, for one night. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Thank you. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. A little bit crowded in here, I understand. Ooh, I get the nice room. Thanks, Feta. Something different about you, I can tell. Hope you ain't here to cause trouble. No, 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 not really. Um, listen. Drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. Thanks, I'm more interested in just getting rid of this spoiled junk that I have. You won't take it. Fine. Got a hot meal? That'd be nice. Ah, cooked venison steak. Yeah, one of those. Uh, some cheese. Mead? Mead? Nord mead. I guess I've got hunting brew. I don't need uh, more mead, do I? That's good enough. Thanks, Fada. All right, then. I'm right behind you. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Oh, I should probably take my hood off, huh? There we go. A little depressed, don't I? A little sad. That <laughs> that Raven of Anvil story must have bummed me out. But really, I just wanna I just wanna meet the woman. She sounds like she would be perfect for the Razors. Or at least perfect for the Thieves Guild if she wasn't into joining the Razors. Uh, what did I get for a hot meal? I've forgotten already. Cooked venison steak. Hunting brew. Sweet roll. Um, and the Eider cheese. And we've overindulged, but who cares? We're going to bed here. I'm right behind you. We are drunk. Nope, it says we're sober, but sure doesn't look like we're sober. Okay, well, I think we're going to sit and do a little bit of reading, because I have a bunch of books that I need to read. Uh, we won't read the 2920 series right now, but I do have, uh, well, I'm going to sell those, sell that. I forget why I said I was going to hang on to that. stolen, right? All these spell tomes, right? Uh, I was going to read that. I know that. But I think mostly what I, re what I, what I want to read is Xerus Morphus and the Helm That Wasn't. So, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, this is the end of this play session. This episode will end after I read this book. So, if you want to skip ahead to the next episode, if there is an episode ready for you to watch, you will not miss any gameplay for the remainder of this episode. Those of you who are still here, enjoy as I read Xerus Morphus and the Helm That Wasn't by someone. When the smith Xerus Morphus woke up that morning, he had an excellent idea. I'm going to make a new kind of sword, he declared to his friends. Daimor, the alchemist, was intrigued. What kind of sword, he asked. Do you need any of my ingredients? It'll be something new, Xerus said. I'm going to do it on my own, without any help whatsoever. Neither Adra nor Daedra will stop me. It's my forge, I can do what I want. And so he went to his forge, and he crafted an axe. 
The head of the axe was... Wait, sword. What? So he's going to build a sword. Make, craft a sword. The head of the axe was a bit big, and the haft of the axe was a bit small, but he smiled when he saw what he had done. This is better than any other sword, he told himself, and he took it to the temple. The old warrior priest of Zenithar, Ossaberg, was sitting close to the altar, nibbling on a wheel of cheese. What's that you have there? he asked. It's a sword for the glory of Zenithar, Cyrus replied proudly, waved the axe in the air. Ossaberg ducked his head and waited for him to stop, then looked critically at the axe. I don't think it's a sword, he said, trying to be as diplomatic as he could. Here, see? This is a sword. You see the narrow blade? The balance of it? This will cut through armor better than your sword will, Zerus told him, and he smiled, and laid his axe against the altar where all the worshippers could see it. A few of them laughed at the axe and said it would never work, even as an axe, but mostly they were happy to see that someone else was giving to Zenithar, because they weren't smiths and didn't know how. And the old priest sat down and shook his head, and carried on nibbling at his cheese. On the second day, Zerus woke up. He had another idea. I'm going to make a new kind of shield, he declared to his friends. Epicurious, <laughs> really? The court mage asked, What kind of shield? Do you want it to be enchanted? It will be something new, Zerus said. I'm going to do it on my own, without any help whatsoever. Neither Aedra nor Daedra will stop me. It's my forge. I can do what I want. And so he went to his forge, and he crafted a stave. The stave was ten feet tall, and so only a giant could wield it, but he smiled when he saw what he had done. This is better than any other shield, he told himself, and he took it to the temple. The old warrior priest of Zenithar, Ossaberg, was halfway through his wheel of cheese. Ossaberg's going to be constipated by the time this story is over. What's that you have there, he asked. It's a shield for the glory of Zenithar, Zerus replied. And he tried to wave the staff in the air, but it was a bit too big, and it hit the ceiling of the temple, knocking loose a few spiders and a couple of other bugs. How many, how many insects are in this temple? Uh, insects and spiders. Asaberg sighed and looked at the staff. This is a shield, he asked. Well, I suppose it could be used to block a blow or two. You can hit people over the head with it, uh, with this too, Zerus told him. And he laid his staff against the altar, where all the worshippers could see it. A few of them laughed at the staff, but mostly they were happy that someone was giving to Zenithar. And the old priest sat down and carried on nibbling at his cheese. On the third day, Zerus woke up and had another idea. I'm going to make a new kind of helm, he declared to his friends. What kind of helm? Do you want some goat horns to put on it? Jambus, who ran the general goods store, asked. It will be something new, Zerus said. I'm going to do it on my own, without any help whatsoever. Neither, neither Aedra nor Daedra will stop me. It's my forge. I can do what I want. And so he went to his forge and crafted a pot. The pot was excellent for holding soup. It had some obvious drawbacks as a helm, but he smiled when he saw what he had done. This is better than any other helm, he told himself, and he took it to the temple. The old warrior priest of Zenithar, Ossaberg, had finished his cheese. What's that you have there? he asked. It's a helm for the glory of Zenithar, Zerus replied. And he tried to put the pot over Ossaberg's head, but Ossaberg was too quick and moved out of the way. All right, this is silly now, Ossaberg told him. That isn't a good sword. That isn't a good shield. This isn't a good helm. The things you're producing here... Other people like them, Zerus pointed out. They like them because they want an axe or a staff or a pot, Ossaberg said. This isn't the same as a suit of armor. The axe and the staff aren't even very good, though I quite like the pot. These are better than your armor, Zerus said, and he poked Ossaberg in the chest. Look at you. Your robe is no good for stopping swords. Your hood is no good either. Your hands won't get through my shield. You can't just call them a sword and a shield and a helm, Ossaberg tried to explain, but Zerus wouldn't listen. My armor and weapons are better than your armor and weapons, he yelled. He jammed the pot onto his head, took the axe in his right hand and the staff in his left, and attacked. He swung the staff. It didn't hit anything. He swung the axe, and it didn't hit anything either. When he took the pot off his head to look, he saw that Ossaberg had somehow managed to acquire a helm and a sword and a shield. They were very shiny and glowed just a little bit. Ossaberg chopped Zerus's staff in half with the sword, caught the smith's axe blow with his shield, and pulled it away, disarming him, then picked up the pot and put it back on Zerus's head. 
If you wish to be blind, he told Zerus, be blind forever until you apologize. You can't do that, Zerus yelped, trying to take the pot off his head. It's my forge and I can do what I want. Neither Adra nor Daedra will stop me. It's my forge, the old priest replied, and there was something very different about his voice. They are all my forges. By participating in creation, your actions are blessed. But when you become proud and mock the work of others, you should remember, the god who owns the anvil can bring down anyone's pride. I am the god who always wins. With that, the old priest, who wasn't really called Asselberg after all, walked away. Very good. I enjoyed that. All right, everyone. This will end this play session. I've actually been playing for like two and a half hours or something. It's been a very long play session this time, but it's been very fun. Uh, we've been all over the damn map. We started out, at least this play session anyway. This is uh, the very first play session of Act 2. So we started out way down here at Twilight Sepulchre. Went to Glathriel's camp. Went up past uh, Anji's to uh, Leara, I think, and the dragon. So Zalokmir, I think his name was. Then to Anji's camp, then all the way to Markarth, then all the way to Dragon Bridge. And through creation, and tomorrow we'll continue. Solitude, uh, Mount Kilcreath, Widow's Watch, and then finally back to Riften. Until then, everyone, take care. Thanks for watching. Uh, eight hours seems fine, and I will see you around.